Today's story is about a mysterious note left by the father of a missing person, who appeared on a program broadcasted by a TV station. 17 years later, in an attempt to find a woman who suddenly disappeared in Japan in 1994. After the broadcast ended various online communities in Japan, buzzed with discussions about this note. The missing woman's name is Erisher Mayumi. At the time of her disappearance she was 27 years old. Mayumi who lived in the Sumida district of Tokyo, Japan. She lived a happy married life with her husband. She was pregnant but her health was weak so she had to undergo a cesarean section. She had a delicate physique, standing at 5 too tall and weighing only 86 pounds. Because of her fragile health she needed someone's help after giving birth. After giving birth, she didn't have anyone to take care of herself and the baby, so she went to her parents' house to seek help. During the pregnancy, her husband had to continue working so she decided to stay with her parents and came to her parents' house just before giving birth. Mayumi had an older sister named Yoko who lived with her parents' house. After childbirth her health did not fully recover so she continued to stay with her parents and sister, receiving help from her family. She needed assistance especially because she found it too challenging to take care of her baby on her own. Consequently she did not return to her husband after giving birth and stayed at her parents' house for about a year and a half raising her daughter with the help of her family. On September 2, 1994, Mayumi told her sister Yoko that she was going out to meet a friend and left the house around 7 p.m. At that time she was wearing a short-sleeved shirt with a white background and a pattern along with comfortable pants. She carried a small bag with keys wallets and credit cards in it. When she went out, her daughter left home. She walked in a hurry and no one knew where she was going. Although her family became worried when she did not return until late at night they thought she might be spending time with her friend whom she hadn't seen in a while and went to bed. However, the next morning when her parents opened Mayumi's room she was nowhere to be found. Her father tried calling her but she didn't answer. After checking his phone messages multiple times there were no messages from Mayumi. Unable to endure the situation any longer Mayumi's family reported her disappearance to the police. Meanwhile her sister Yoko became suspicious of the friend Mayumi had mentioned meeting. So she decided to call this friend and she made the call. However, her friend denied meeting Mayumi the previous night insisting they hadn't arranged any meeting. Yoko felt very surprised and then attempted to reach out to Mayumi through different means but she still couldn't get in touch with Mayumi. Unable to find any more information about Mayumi's whereabouts, Yoko with a desperate hope searched Mayumi's room hoping to find some contact information for other friends. After rummaging for a while she found a note inside the closet. The note was written in a diary format and revealed that Mayumi had feelings for another man besides her husband who had apparently betrayed her. The man was referred to only as A. The note read, I betrayed my husband. I am dating A, but I was betrayed by A. This may be my betrayal of my husband. Punish me. I am very sorry everyone. According to Yoko the note is indeed Mayumi's handwriting. The note even contained the man's name and phone number. As soon as Yoko saw the note she suspected a connection between this man and Mayumi's disappearance. Moreover she recalled a man calling the house asking for Mayumi after her disappearance and the name he mentioned matched the name written on the note. Yoko wondered if Mayumi devastated by the pain of unrequited love after breaking up with this man had chosen to disappear on her own. She immediately called the man using the phone number from the note and proposed to meet. Surprisingly the man agreed to meet at the designated place. Upon meeting the man, Yoko asked him if he had seen Mayumi on the day of her disappearance. He admitted that he had met her that morning. When Yoko inquired about Mayumi's current whereabouts he responded vaguely suggesting that if Mayumi really died I would go to jail. Apart from that A did not disclose any other information. Yoko promptly reported Mayumi's meeting with this suspicious man to the police. The police investigated the man confirming that he did meet Mayumi that morning but had parted ways shortly after. He had then gone to a convenience store before returning home. No substantial evidence was found against him. However, Yoko insisted that A must be related to Mayumi's disappearance. When the police investigation showed no progress, Yoko decided to hire a private detective. She continued to suspect the man A, Mayumi had last met. Six months later on March 9, 1995, Yoko received a call from the detective agency. The detective reported observing the suspicious man. He stated that he saw the man carrying two canned drinks late at night heading towards a mountainous area. Yoko and her family immediately informed the police, 
hoping that the detective's information could unravel the mystery of Mayumi's disappearance. Subsequently the police searched the mountainous area but nothing significant was found. The case gradually slipped into obscurity. Time passed the disappearance of Mayumi became a pending case and eventually Mayumi's case remained unresolved. Seventeen years later, a television program aired in Japan on Asahi TV, covering various social issues. On October 13, 2011, Asahi TV featured the case of Mayumi, who had disappeared on September 2, 1994 nearly 17 years prior. In the program there was an interview with Mayumi's father and towards the end Mayumi's sister Yoko, tearfully shared her story. After Yoko's interview concluded the program ended with an appeal asking for any information or tips related to Mayumi. However, after the broadcast ended various online community forums in Japan, became a buzz with discussions about the program. One of the most frequently asked questions on these forums was about the memo. What's up with that memo? Did you see it too? Many people mentioned the memo which appeared in the scene where Mayumi's father was being interviewed saying don't believe Yoko's words. If this memo held any real significance and was indeed true the case left unresolved for 17 years could have taken a completely different turn. In fact, if we consider the events surrounding Mayumi's disappearance 17 years ago, all the testimonies about Mayumi's last actions and the man mentioned in Mayumi's note were provided by Yoko. All the statements about what Mayumi wore when she said she was going out to meet a friend came solely from Yoko. Additionally, Yoko's accounts about Mayumi meeting the man mentioned in the note and the suspicious aspects of that man were also entirely Yoko's statements. People who had been sympathetically following Mayumi's disappearance and her family's tragic story began to question the truthfulness of Yoko's testimony, especially after seeing this single memo. Subsequently, Japanese netizens voluntarily started re-examining the case from the beginning. They confirmed that indeed all the evidence related to Mayumi's disappearance came from Yoko. They also discovered that all the directions of investigation had been based on what Yoko had said. Netizens argued that if Yoko was the one responsible for Mayumi's disappearance she could have easily created various scenarios manipulated situations and lied to cover her crime. Netizens pointed out several odd aspects of the case. Firstly, if Mayumi had decided to disappear and end her misery as indicated in the memo there was no reason for her to include the man's phone number in her note. Moreover, when Yoko claimed to have discarded Mayumi's note after reading it people couldn't comprehend why she would dispose of a note that seemed like a farewell or a will. Furthermore, people found it strange that Yoko strongly told the police that the man mentioned in Mayumi's note was a suspect. During the actual police investigation that man denied any involvement with Mayumi and he did not admit to anything related to their relationship. One netizen who claimed to have worked at a private detective agency pointed out that tracing someone is not easy. They mentioned that in dark places it's impossible to know what someone might be holding in their hand. People had been expressing disbelief in Yoko's statements for a while. As suspicions grew around Yoko due to numerous people questioning her another netizen appeared claiming to have known her since childhood. This person asserted that Yoko had always been jealous of Mayumi even in their younger years and had blamed her own mistakes on Mayumi. This further fueled doubts about Yoko. Some people said that although Mayumi's father knew everything he was afraid of irritating his daughter so he used a memo to tell everyone not to believe Yoko's words. After stirring significant controversy Asahi TV made the contentious video private and it became inaccessible anywhere. There were no further interviews conducted with Mayumi's family or Yoko. Furthermore, as the statute of limitations expired no new facts were revealed. After the broadcast Yoko had kept a low profile since 2013 and the case remained unresolved becoming a mystery.